start the recording. Okay, you guys kindly hid, which uh, uh, which is okay. So I'll I'll take the take the screen here. So welcome. So this is um, uh, I'll I'll start with a, let's start and and then let's see who if anyone else joins us. But if anything, then other people can also look at this online uh, once we publish this on YouTube, so that other people can get involved. Uh, so I'll, I'll present an overview of what happens with the CD Eco Home Collaborative Design, how we actually can work together, because um, the big part about the CD Eco Home is that it's a it's um, it's a full digital open source model. But in order to get there, one of the things we have recognized is that it takes a lot of effort. It's huge effort to have the full full model to the extent that we want it, to the point that. Nobody really does that. In a, even in the industry, people don't never really have the complete models because they're just so huge and extensive. But here comes collaborative design, and there is a hope of actually doing it if we get enough people involved. So for this year, we're, we're trying to solve for that question of people showing up, having enough development, meaning that you have to avail tools that are open source and available to everybody, also that are teachable uh, relatively quickly. and we have to market this and make it a big hairy audacious goal enough that people show up to actually do do the collaborative design session and that's going to be in the form of a a large hackathon that we're planning for uh, this is like late august uh right now and what we're going to do right now is show some of the process of how you can break down a complex task into small bite-sized chunks and that's modularity so modularity allows us to to break down a, a topic like the cd home into into bite-sized pieces. The way we work with the CD home is for typically four by eight foot. This is working in imperial units here, four by eight foot or four by nine foot modules that the total number of them is actually 70, seven zero. The good news is that each one of those can be detailed out as an individual module because we know how they fit together. Um, they slide up next to each other, are bolted together, or screwed in some places. So if we know that, we can get 70 people times however many people on per module, uh, if we have effective design build uh, techniques that allow us to do that. There are techniques for that. We use the wikis and, and other things. So we've got, let's, let's start with what assets we have. So let's go to the, uh, the working document. Um, and actually go through this process and see if we can divide any of these tasks to any people. So like Logan, for example, you have the, uh, there's a list of people who have the FreeCAD badge. So FreeCAD is the tool we use here. So FreeCAD. Is my mic working? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. So where's the group document? Yep. So um, let me paste that in the chat box and that is... The wall mod, uh, and let me also actually share my screen so you can see where, where I'm navigating. Um, yeah, let's do this one here. Makes it a little challenging to put in the chat box. Okay. So that's our that's our working document in the chat box, and I'll share my screen again. Um. So go into it. Go into edit mode, mm -hmm. and this document right now is open. Permissions, so any anyone on the internet can find and comment. Um. And we can also this is, so this is comment only. Now in the index, I see that there's a, an index, and there's where we actually work on the modules themselves. So there's seventy total. Uh, go to slide thirty-eight which is the, the example, and the slide after that is another document. Where, so th this whole document here describes how the wall modules are designed. And if you can understand the basics of that, 
uh, this actually explains how if you had to design a module like what what you would do and what I can ask for feedback on is uh, co just comments within it as far as what's clear and what's not and does it actually make sense because you know we're in this deep deep into it so we can't necessarily all the time tell what what is clear to people and not but if you do go to to page 39 in the working document you'll be taken to a whole new document which is which is the actual so if you link click on that oh that link okay it's an actual link there and here's you've got the role division of the what i just said there's 70 modules and that's how they look so for the cd go home uh, model those are it one through 24 on the first floor external walls you've got 25 through 48 on a second story because it's a two-story house that's a thousand square feet you've got interior walls which are first floor 49 to 59 and interior walls 60 through 69 and second floor to basically the two bedrooms uh, the template on page five kind of th that that's our that's our template so we can take this and and use it to fill in the details the critical things if we talk about cheat sheets which is what the stage we're at right now which is what we want to generate is to talk about okay what are the what are you cutting like okay so there's lumber there there's some sheathing there's some other parts like like house wrap which is described in the first document the house mo wall module design uh, guide um, but we know that there's certain parts that go into the wall and then we t have to talk about a build procedure and the, see the build procedure is something that uh, unless you build it you kind of may not know but there's also uh, so someone in a know would, would be able to do that, but at least for cutting it, that, like what you're cutting for each module, that anybody can do because you can say, oh, okay, in the model we have these parts and they're so long, and you can read that all off the, um, the document in Sweet Home 3D. So now my question to you is, uh, have you guys uh, seen Sweet Home 3D? Can you open up <coughs> the document that's there? Um, I was messing around in it a while. Is my mic still working? Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah, okay, just checking. No, I was messing around with it a while ago. It was having some weird error, and I'm running on a Windows machine, so that might be why. Yeah. But it was having a weird error where the, I don't know what the word would be, but all the information sections would start glitching out and shifting, and it was oh. weird. But it seemed really intuitive, though, when it wasn't yeah. broken. Yeah, <laughs> and there's, yeah, so what I would suggest for that is... Virtual machine, maybe? Mm, I don't know, I would say... Oh. Do you have the ability to uh, dual boot? I don't have a dual boot set up yet. I tried it once, but yeah. that would probably be the best way, right? I played with it in Windows, and I, I didn't run into that, but I was doing my, <laughs> I was doing my own stuff, so I wasn't... I wasn't Probably just my laptop, it hates me. Yeah, so what we want to do there is probably, if you do a boot, the, th the thing that's on on the OSE Linux does work, so you can definitely start with that as an option. Uh, for the sake of the working session, like if we're at the, so the question is, what's the status of the, the design and build right now? The full full model that's technical is found in Sweet Home 3D. Uh, we have, we don't have the full technical model outside of the generic modules within FreeCAD. And that's on the, uh, that's linked uh, if you go to, uh, so the main page on this CD Home is the, this page, it's called Seed Home V2 on the wiki. Let me paste that for everybody. But there's the CAD link. So this is like a whole, our, our whole development template. Uh, under the CAD, you see what we have in FreeCAD and Sweet Home. So the Sweet Home file, which is actually linked, um, let's see. I would go to the Sweet Home version to, uh, so you, you click on 3D CAD, which is I, item number five. And this is our generic development template where we have all of the development steps like from here's like starting with requirements mm -hmm. to concept design 3d cad and so forth so number five is 3d cad 
So you can find, we typically do what's called part libraries. So you got a part library, and this is actually, I seeded this. This is, uh, uh, we actually have, uh, this is what's known as a part library. So what a part library is, is essentially a, just a, a gallery within the wiki. That's like all the 70 parts there, primarily filled. But part libraries, what we do is you have a nice thumbnail picture, which we just put in there by uploading that picture, and, and the work uh, links to the working uh, working file right underneath. Uh, so you can see different part libraries we have, and that's there's a whole ton of work done already. Like the freak out, for example, we have full models of the, the wall modules, the, the yeah. window modules, the door modules. But the trick is that some of them are sl might be slightly different throughout the house, and so you gotta have go module by module, especially because like okay, one might have like a here's a wall outlet, here's a light or like some plumbing inside. Well, so so these modules actually end up containing electrical and plumbing. Uh, so that means that just about every one of them is slightly unique. There might be some repeats, like completely identical, but a lot of them are just um, uh, unique in some small way. So we have to, if we do build instructions, say we want to have a team of 140 people. So we always talk about these major swarms uh, for the purpose of uh, either rapid builds or just making the economic model work. The way we're looking at the model right now is we would have 24 people working for five days on a single build. Now that doesn't assume that that there is a inspection schedule because some sometimes you have to have the inspector come in and they might be able to come only on a certain day. So you can't typically you may not be able to do the five days straight unless you're in a zoneless jurisdiction where they don't have building inspectors, which is, means the countryside or elsewhere uh, or some some counties. But typically you have inspection schedules, which means that you have to uh, spread the build out to more than five days. But the ideal situation is you, you come in with 24 people, we build, and we're done in, in just rapid time, which is a breakthrough, a breakthrough model of how you can compress the time because it's all modular design and can be built right on site. So this is not pre-built on site. This is, we, we are all building this right on the site. So for each yeah. module, um, yeah, there's um, uh, the template is the slide number... If we go to the, the thirty-seven, module, yeah, yeah, either either slide thirty-seven, <clears throat> or in the actual cheat sheets, that slide, yeah, I recopied there. The idea is that in the cheat sheets, you can at this point where we're at, we can take the the Sweet Home three D files and cut and paste them, and actually measure them within Sweet Home, and. He, because you can do measurements in Sweet Home, and you can pretty much fill out a lot of the cut list. Like, okay, so you got, um, you know, let's say wall module one. That's actually one that's been done. So you can take a look at that, um, either slide six or thirty-eight. But if you take a look at that, there's materials, there's tools, there's cut list, there's build procedure. Um, and for each cheat sheet, you don't necessarily have to put in the materials and tools because they'll be. Uh, you know, you'll have them on site. Uh, and the outside of maybe the unique ones, like you said, like yeah. if I understand it correctly, there's yeah. like the structural boards, the drywall, or whatever. But some might have a pipe, some might yeah. have an electrical conduit. Yep. So for the form, would you basically assume all the standard stuff is there, but then be like add in PVC pipe and? Yeah, the cheat sheet wants to include that, but if you don't include it, like what I'm suggesting here is the idea that uh, while this sheet here has the materials listed, um, it's kind of hard to fit in. Like you're repeating the materials and you're doing a cut list, which is basically a manipulation on the materials. So why not just do the cut list <clears throat> and then avoid the materials because the cut list is going to assume that if you're taking a nine foot pre-cut stud, you must have one on uh, the module. And that will be reinforced by the picture. Like you see, oh, you've got these four verticals there. That's that's four of those studs that we need to have. So I'm just saying, remove, don't include the materials because it's like this is just a cheat sheet. Oh yeah, that makes and, sense. Uh, or just cl less clutter because you'll find that you might need more space for the build instructions. And and that particular module, I didn't do a lot. Like say module one for the build procedure, I just did the bare mo bare bones, like what you need to do there. I just talked about. Um, yeah, I didn't even s include the put in that PVC pipe that's in that that first one there. But 
But typically the build procedure is going to be the thing you want to focus on, the, the cut list and build procedure if you're talking about build cheat sheets. Uh, so we can be more specific here and, and call these wall module build cheat sheets. This is not for any specific person out, uh, specific purpose outside of you're actually building in a field. You've got a crew of people. Say you want to manage a bunch of people that are novice, even novices. Like if you line out the cut list and show people how to cut, you can even have novices do that as long as the build procedure is explained enough. Uh, but the build procedure is typically you cut the length, then you drill things together and screw them together. Uh, so cutting and, and sticking things together is basically the level here. Uh, it doesn't require too much skill because on, on one side, if you have, for example, the piece of plywood, that's already got straight edges. Well, why don't we just use that as our straight edge so we don't even know how to, you don't even have to know how to align things. But pretty much if you work with the plywood, you're automatically aligned there. So it, it becomes kind of easy when you work the, the modular level as opposed to the industry standard where they would like make a whole wall on the ground typically and then lift it up with a bunch of guys. Well, that requires a bunch of people and it's, it could be dangerous if the thing falls on you. Here you were talking about individual modules that uh, you know even a single person can carry. They're, they're about 150 pounds each. Uh, so you want to typically have two people carry that. or But it's it's human size is the point of it. Mm -hmm. That's that's how we do it. Um, so the question becomes if we've got the CAD files. So the, the place to look at the ultimate repository. So we, we work in a, there's one is the working doc where we can have people, well, we don't have a lot of people right now, but uh, if we had a whole bunch of people, uh, oh, we, we got like, six seven people yeah hi justin um, um jesse logan eric joshua ken all right uh, if we have a, a number of people we uh, this is where the role this is the role allocation cheat sheets here so if we have a bunch of people each person can can say oh i i pick wall module two three four and so forth so here i actually put my name uh on this on the, on the first one <coughs> and put it under and you can actually link to my log from there so you see what I've been doing uh, uh, today but uh, here's where we would self-organize to select a particular module you want to work on and if you select one so I would ask you guys let's see is that document editable anyone we're gonna make this editable so anyone can edit this so now you can if you refresh probably you will be able to uh, actually change this document you can cut and paste your little icon for your head, uh, like I did mine there, uh, from some source. But this is what, what we would do. We would select the module and then and do it. So now, the thing that's tractable by people who don't know how this house is designed, well, we have the technical model in Sweet Home 3D. So for example, so let me uh, let me show you how that, that works. How to navigate through Sweet Home 3D. So I open it. Um, I open it this other way. So. Uh, because the Sweet Home 3D wasn't working for me because of some graphic drivers, I had to use an older version here. So I'm actually, uh, I'm on a Linux Ryzen 3600 desktop. Uh, yeah, how did that build go? Uh, awesome. The, as far as the build of the Ryzen 3600? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's great. Um, I mean, it's so much, <laughs> like, I, I always used to be on, on laptops, and now I, I don't want to go back to a laptop because this is just faster. So I mean, it's, it's really nice. Uh, I have a three monitor setup, so I can I'll work different screens right now, uh, which I can't. Uh, just one of my screens uh, appears. So if I open up, so if you guys look at my screen, I think I'm still sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at my screen there, then. What you will see that's that's how sweet home looks when you open it up uh now you might ask why are we using the sweet home 3d thingy um plus free cat that's kind of weird but you know the sweet home 3d has a really good ability to display and render things it's used typically used for interior design but it has enough flexibility that you can do complete cab design in there as well by simply using using cubes like the whole would you believe that the entire model okay so i'll open it up here let me open up the say the cd cajon um 
So this is actually the technical model of the, the Sea Eagle home. Well, I, it has all these layers that I can turn on. Um, but, so this is, so Katarina did this model, and it's a full technical model that you can turn on every single part of it by the, the check boxes. And as long as you can navigate that, you're good. But that's that's what the CD Go Home looks like right now, technically. Mm. There's maybe some little trim details that are different. But this model actually has every single piece of it. So, um, so if you open up this file, you can extract, for example, if I hide everything, I can just extract that one. So wall module, so this is the garage or carport rather, it's a deck carport. But right there, like this, uh, the bottom right corner, this module on the side there, that's module number one. So the naming convention, like the, the thing, so it's, it's right there. And it goes one, two, three, four around this way, up to like around counterclockwise to 24 on the first floor and then up to 48 on the second floor. And then there's interior modules that this mod model has. You can simply uh, select the one, one module and look at its technical design and take measurements. And that will take you to the point that, oh, the cut list is this piece of two by four that's 14 inches long, etc. You can extract all that information from there, and that's something that a large team can do without with very little training. As long as you can open up this file, you can pretty much do that. Uh, now, this model, so, so Sweet Home 3D is typically used for interior design. It has good good things, like you can do an interior walkthrough, so I just switched into uh, the walkthrough view. This is a model that doesn't have the, the interior sheathing on it, but it does have, like, so you've got your, your structure, your, some of the interior walls, the flooring, the roofing, like this blocking there, uh, windows and things like that. Uh, it doesn't have electrical or plumbing or utility appliances right now. Uh, we have other models that have those things in there, other Sweet Home 3D files. And the, the magical thing about this thing is that this entire technical design is done from cubes. So like, for example, this, you know, these two by sixes that are the verticals, that's an elongated cube. So is everything. So is the sheet that's a flat cube. So oh, almost like the, so what, the so default cube in Blender. What to say is that we hacked Sweet Home 3D to be simply uh, a, an actual real technical design tool. So if I click on any object in here, I can expand it, like it's got properties like dimensions, so you can actually <laughs> draw all this out piece by piece by changing dimensions, copying and pasting. And it's kind of um, not super efficient, but it is it is sufficient for a complete technical model. Um, now, I wouldn't do things like, you know, piping and your bathtub and all these other things. That's like more complicated shapes. And that's where we go into FreeCAD and, and so forth. But um, why do we go with Sweet Home 3D in the first place? Well, for one, it lets you do cool things like the renderings or visualizations, walkthroughs. It's, it's easy enough and it's actually uh, powerful enough that if you have these modules that are designed in Sweet Home, the learning curve for Sweet Home is very little. So any novice can actually start doing a thing. You, you, what you would do there is you would create just to show you why we're doing this in Sweet Home, you can create part libraries, which, which up here in the upper left here, like, like for example, there's a bathroom pipe part library. You can throw a bath in here. Let's see, can we throw a bath in there? Well, you have to actually do that in, uh, not the 3D view, but uh, aerial view here. Say you want to throw a bath, bath in there, you would actually, uh, the ease of use is that you have this two-dimensional thing uh, in the top window, so that's like viewing from the top. So you want to throw a bathtub in there? There you go, you throw it in there. I probably threw it in somewhere in the... Uh, let's see, let's go inside for the virtual tour. Where did I throw that bath bathtub in there? It's somewhere, it might be on the first floor. Um, Glitched it to a wall. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but... Um, uh, but the point is that you can basically uh, create part libraries. What, what my point is, uh, in this upper left-hand corner, you create a part library, you, you drag and drop pieces. So the power of that is, is if you have the technically correct modules that you drag and drop into the, the two-dimensional view, you can readily compose this 3D uh, thing that's a buildable 
real model of a house. So the critical thing is, can we get to these technical modules that we can manipulate like that? And we have that. We have actually most of it. We don't have like 100%, we have maybe like 90%. Uh, but that's already as powerful because that means, okay, so now here you've got this design of this two-story house. You can reconfigure. Oh, there it is. It's on a, on a roof. You've got a big <laughs> on the roof here, uh, which is great. But that shows you the, the power of this. If you have real technical designs that you can throw around and see this is, you know, you move it around. It's, it's very user-friendly. Um, and then you can do renderings, like just to show you uh, create photo of this thing. Let's, you know, let's do uh, create photo right now. Let's render it. Um, and create that so you know you have a red ready uh, ready way to do renders for visualization of course you got to set the lighting and other things look a little better but that you know that rendered this technical model here but let's close out of that um, so the power is that um, for the collaborative design part uh, the goal of the large-scale event that we're proposing for the end of September is to is to complete an exhaustive list of these modules and put a human interface around it and instructionals and it's largely about rapid learning instructionals that allow a person to take these modules and make various configurations of this house because you can do all kinds of variations so this is just one two-story 1000 square foot structure you can think about just about anything like say a thing with a courtyard in the middle a thing that's made of two of these, a bunch of a row house that's made of a bunch of these <coughs> next to each other, staggered, you know, whatever. It's completely up to you uh, within a power of average individuals to do it. So we're talking about democratizing design uh, to the point of any person being able to design their dream home in a second because you've got the technical modules that are already worked out and buildable. That's the difference between architecture that's like BS architecture versus or just design that somebody just jots some things up on a screen versus the idea of completely buildable design. There's a world of difference between the two. So if you start with modules that are actually buildable and engineered, then the human that takes those modules has already included engineering and buildability within that structure. So that's the paradigm by which uh, we can create access to this. And with open design, anyone can download this across the world. Uh, in our apprenticeship, we're teaching people exactly how to do that uh, to the point that we can run enterprises around this and, and solve real issues collaboratively. So uh, getting back to uh, the working document here. So we have the role divisions. This is like the simple 2D, 2D shape here. Uh, we can allocate roles here as i mentioned within sweet home this is an example that so let's for example give you an how do you extract this from the sweet home model well it's just clicking on things and hiding hiding things so in this in this model here i'm going to hide everything outside of that wall module that was there i know it's on the first floor it's module number one so i'm going to hide hide just about everything uh except for so that's i'm hiding the second story now uh, sheathing, second story front wall. Uh, now you see this. So it's so now there you see that that's the module right there, this corner module. That's number one. Uh, so I keep hiding stuff. The foundation. I'm gonna hide the front wall. The left wall. I'm gonna hide the back and top plate. There's that wall. So it's right there. This front wall here. Uh, sorry, right wall, is what's shown. So I can hide it, unhide it. Um, uh, so there it is there's that wall but it's it's so actually unfold it so that you can hide that the the right wall it has a plus sign it unfolds into the uh, the individual walls that make it up and each one of those walls is broken down further so this is actually atomic it's got every single part in there uh, oh, all the way down right to screw now, level for the purpose of doing a collaborative design is um uh there's one trick here so uh, what i like to do in order to just save that one document which you can download off the cd home 2 wiki page under cad uh, the technical model uh control c so you can control c paste that and start a new document so i just got went into a document control v to paste it so now i've got this wall in another document now here 
you've got all these parts in it, but you can only hide the whole thing. What you do is right click on it to say unroot furniture. And it thinks it's furniture because this is typically furniture, but we're hacking this to, to be real technical design uh, that's user friendly. Now the other, uh, just talk about FreeCAD here, what we'll do overall, uh, now FreeCAD is much more powerful including uh, engineering analysis like thermal analysis, structural analysis, you name it. Uh, FreeCAD is completely powerful, extensible Python program, fully open source that all kinds of additions, like for example, if you want to make a specialized workbench to design a CD home, we can. We actually have pr procedures for how to do that. We've got this workbenches platform that allows us to, um, to basically do add and drop buttons to, to do a functionality like the, the CD home designer where you drag and drop the parts in to, to make a finished building. Uh, but So that's the combination of FreeCAD and Sweet Home. Uh, so in Sweet Home here, this is considered furniture. This is our lowbrow user-friendly interface. Uh, but now, since we um, did that, now we can hide all the other parts. And this is my wall, wall module number one. Uh, so there it is. Now I can take that. Uh, still further, I can control C and then even start a new document. Control V, so I just got it. Um, control C, control V. We've got that single wall module, and look at that. It's made up of all its, all its little parts, right? So we've got the framing, and it breaks down the framing. So uh, what we want to do here is, once again, ungroup this furniture here. So you, and ungroup everything. Ungroup that. So OK, now we've got, um, uh, so we ungrouped everything here. Well, actually, did I? No, ungroup that top level. So everything you see these. So these all, as I mentioned, are just cubes, little cubes that are either flat or various shape. But this is all made of little primitives of, of cubes, cubic primitives. And that's all here. So you can now hide and, and display every single part of this. And this is how you can identify what this entire module is made of up to every single detail. So there's the sheathing. So you, you've got all these pieces in there. So as long as you can manipulate this, so, so yeah, that's that's your your full technical atomized design of the entire. So that's the framing. Then you can add the sheathing. Uh, you can read the dimensions of it. So you can actually double click on any of these things here, and it will show you dimensions. Like if you can't really read this, uh, there's two ways to read it. You can double click on the actual part, and you can uh, you can read the dimensions of it. Well, that's the location. That's the size. So it's uh, it tells me that. Oh, so what did I select? I s selected this. Um, so say I selected this 2x6 stud right there. Which one is that? Well, you have to hide the other ones to show which one that is. Uh, so I selected that stud right there. Bam. Let's find out more about it. What is that 2x6 stud? Well, in its properties, you have it's a one and a half. So that's that's what two dimension two by so called two by lumber is. It's actually one and a half inches. Uh, the depth of it is five and a half, so a two by six is actually one and a half inches by five and a half inches. Uh, that's how you know it's a two by six. And then the height is eight feet, eight inches, five eighths. Um, if you translate that to a number, that's actually one of one hundred four and five eighths. Uh, and the and how do you know that? So so let's take a calculator. 8 times 12 equals, that's 96. That would be an 8-foot stud. Plus 8 inches is 104. And then there's 5 eighths. So it's 104 plus 5, five eighths. Um, how do you do that? I don't know. 104 and 5 eighths, that's what that number says. So if you understand Menards and Home Depot, you'll, you'll understand that 104 and 5 eighths inches is actually two by, a two by piece of lumber that's a nine foot stud. And they're called actually pre-cut studs, which means that, uh, so that's a two by six pre-cut stud. Uh, what that means is that after you add the top and bottom plates, which is kind of the structure here, so explaining how a structure, typical structure looks like. This is standard frame. Well, this is not standard framing. This is non-standard framing. This is not how pe people do it in a construction world. This is our modular design from OSE OBI. Mm -hmm. uh, but to explain the pre-cut stud, that means if you put a top plate and bottom plate on it, it ends up being close to nine feet exactly. 
it's actually three eighths short of nine feet to, to accommodate for some other little discrepancies which we don't get into right now. Um, but the idea of a, a two by six pre-cut stud, which is the entire first floor, the first floor of the CD home is nine feet tall. It uses these nine foot pre-cut studs. That means when we buy them off the shelf, we don't have to cut them to that, that size that makes the overall length nine feet. See if you started with nine feet to start with, which you, you can get those nine footers at the store. Um, but then if you put the top plate and bottom plate, it will be more than nine feet. Uh, and we like to keep it at nine feet because that's a standard dimension. It's a, a pretty standard size and simplifies things because you can remember nine as opposed to like nine feet, three inches or whatever. Uh, so that's our nine foot module. It's made of these pre-cut studs. It's made of blocking. Uh, the blocking is used to attach the, the plywood. So on the front, if we attach the plywood, you see the plywood ended up being, let me expand this, the plywood ended up being halfway up the blocking. Mm -hmm. It's just how we build these things to explain how this is constructed. Then the bottom, it's uh, there's actually, um, uh, you can hardly see it, but that it's we're sticking out one inch below the, the bottom plate because this module sits on a sill plate on the foundation. Um, so if you have the, there's another two by underneath that. So that's why we have it sticking out uh, one inch below because that allows the water to drain off like uh, properly. Uh, but in all these designs, we have the, the front sheathing is one inch below the bottom of the module for proper drainage. And that's just how it works. And then we have a, about one foot gap up there, which we cover later. That's when we build this thing. And once we actually build this up in the house, we add that other sheeting. Well, why don't we extend this sheeting now? Well, because they don't make two by nine sheeting. You just get sheeting at in eight foot sections. So we start there. Uh, but what I'm saying here is that now you have this model, you can take every single module and break it down into parts. And so what, what I just showed you right now um, is sufficient. So if you go back into our document, you can now say, this is the cut list. You just read what parts are in that model and you write it down. So you would say, okay, take your... Um, say uh, the top plates, you know, these these things. In this particular module there, uh, if you look at the technical model, you'll see that the sheathing actually sticks out to the side. So this is one of those variations I mentioned, like the corner module is slightly different. If you go into the CAD model, you'll see why this plywood sticks out a little bit to the side, because it actually goes over the next module to it on a corner. Uh, but in this case, if you've got this top plate that you read off the model, the Sweet, the sweet Home 3D, uh, you read it's it's 42.5 inches either from its data or actually there's in another way you can read in this so if you have this model in the top window here you can also use a dimensions arrow so there's two ways to get the dimensions out of it you can use the dimensions arrow which is um, so that's the module you, um, you can click zoom on that click zoom um, that's the top view there uh, zoom in um, and it's like all the way to the right hand side. I mean, zoom in, no, plus, plus. Let's keep zooming in. All right, so you've got this module, it's all the way in there. Let's move this over here a little bit. Um, you can use this, there's a measuring tool that's this one up here. So you can actually measure this. Um, but it's kind of hard to see this because the top view is only like the, the top. Uh, top view you don't don't see other details but that's the alternative way you can actually read the dimensions here and it's kind of tricky because you got to get it exactly at the right 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 corner so you got to kind of zoom in quite a bit to get there but you can in principle read that oh yeah that's how big is that member this top thing here that's a, I know that's a two by six but let's see can I extract that yeah sure it's a two by six which means really it's five and a half because that's that's what a two by six means. So you can read read the dimensions from two places. Here you can ge now generate a cut list from reading the dimensions of the Sweet Home 3D file. And you can say, oh yeah, that member is 42.5 inches. Well, how do I get that? Well, I will take an eight footer, let's say, and I will cut it into 42 by 5.5 um, inches. 
you'll take the next the the common stock size which is like eight feet typically you get eight feet for eight footers for the top plates that we get the top plates out of because typically you get uh, the top plates bottom plates typically the modules are four feet wide here it's actually shorter it's only 42.5 not 48 um, but typically it's 48 and you get that out of a two uh, two by four that two by six piece of lumber that's typically eight feet long so there you go there's procedures where if you examine visually what you have in a, in a CAD drawing in Sweet Home you can actually say oh, okay well cut this piece into this size that size and so forth uh, so you can in principle be able to to get all this information at least for the framing what all the framing members are for the plywood and then you also have to study what else goes into the panel and the whole big document the house wall module design guide it tells you what well what else goes into these panels oh so we have wall panel construction 101 like you know like physics 101 uh, wall panel 101 through 109 uh, how do you add all the things that fit into a wall panel um, but for now what we can do is uh, if we can succeed at uh, maybe like an assignment for all you guys would be take you know put your name on one of these modules and, and extract the actual cut list what's it made of uh, do that now the build procedure unless you know about building and you study some of this maybe study some of our videos like from the past builds the time lapses you kind of have to study video so what we do is have a whole video repository i'll actually use that as a uh, another uh, asset let's see did I include the link to the video repository I don't think so but the video gallery we have the CD go home library so you can actually follow our progress um, I'll put a CD go home to video gallery that's ongoing that's like we're on day 8 uh, May 22 21 22 we just did this uh, yesterday day 8 was where we're at uh, so let me put this link here so you can follow the visual build because see the thing is if you go into um, okay, so I'm in, in the template. There's a CAD file link that you should put in, which is uh, the thing on the wiki on, under Sweet Home 3D CAD. Uh, video link. So we can also include things like video links. So this is like global collaboration. You can, like, there could be a team that's out in a field uploading files to, like, like I show here. So take a look at that. Um, and then you might want to find out, oh, how do I build this wall module? Well, we did that on, uh, I think, around here. See, we're painting panels. Oh, gee, look at that. Does that look like one of your models, your panels? Yeah, it is. It's a time lapse here. So if you study this video here, you can actually see how people put this together. Um, so by a combination, that's the house wrap that's going on, for example. Um, there's the cutting there there's the screwing together so as a combination of between the actual videos the cad files and some knowledge well between the the bill materials the concept is bill materials video and cad files they should be self-reinforcing and sufficient to generate build procedures so say we have this documentation like this precise enough that you can follow it um, you can in principle by just by taking time lapses and, and and documenting all this through media through the internet another team can be generating the build cheat sheets uh, so there's a lot of different ways you can collaborate uh, but basically with digital sharing of info okay so there's for example the insulation that goes in it's part of that there's the blocking that goes in um, but the idea is that we're combining digital design with physical design and uh, enabling large teams to work together like this so that's that's the process how long did that time lapse take in real time uh, that one wall panel was one hour uh, the the second wall panel we built was one hour what you see here this was our first panel with two people who've never built it and it took them one uh, two hours to figure it out so once you get into the rhythm and all that you kind of get faster at it yep after you're in the rhythm it takes you one hour and uh, we made some calculations you can actually like get really r rigorous and say well how long does it take you to cut a piece of 
wood, how long does it take you to screw in a screw? You could come up with this long formula that, that calculates how, how long each module should take. The theoretical calculation is, is 37 minutes for one of these panels yeah. or so. So you can actually get pretty rigorous in terms of defining how, how the whole, how long the build can take place, how, how long it <laughs> require. Um, um, so, it would be a giant video file, but either a live stream yeah. or a pre-recorded build of one of those modules, like yeah. full. And you probably wouldn't want to do it for like an actual construction site, just like a panel for panel's sake, but just be like, yeah, this is this step, we're doing this, we're doing that. Um, Gee, that's exactly what we're going to do in apprenticeship. So we're, we're catching a lot of it through time lapse right now. And we're going to build two more houses before September. So we're going to try to capture, yes, those detailed procedures so that you can have an exhaustive step-by-step -step <laughs> written down procedure through a globally collaborative team. Now, um, you know, just as a mental exercise, think about what's the limit, like how many of these can you do and how fast can you build a house, both as a matter of, okay, here's a interesting experience for somebody to participate in versus actual revenue model where you have workers and they can actually build a house much faster than industry standards like the, the idea here is a typical house takes uh, you know say around six months eight months maybe uh well you can compress build time rapidly by by having a much larger team work in parallel right so that's there's new economics that can come out of that and actually make sense but i mean what's the limit like it, the limit is how many people you can have on site and how how good your instructionals are and you can, in, in principle, have, let's say you've got 140 people and they all swarm on it and each one of them builds the, the module. Say it's complete novices, they take two hours. Well, two hours later, you've got all the modules for the, the house. Okay, ready to assemble the house, build the house. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that, man, it's just ridiculously crazy how, how you can accelerate the build schedules and uh, if you have a huge swarm of people. Uh, there is a, another company that does this in a different context and they actually don't use modular design it's called um, church in the day there's a, a group that they, they get like 200 carpenters and in 24 hours they build an entire church well that requires skilled labor so they're all kind of skilled there but so it's different than ours we don't necessarily require that people are skilled to do this but it's very interesting that yeah you can um, create new opportunities for how you can build things including the fact that you know the selling point one of the selling points is like if you want to build this entire house you can actually do a few of these modules, like you know, you save this work for a weekend. You you build a few of these, and then uh, you just do keep doing that over months. If you have a full time job, even you can keep doing that for months. You just do something over a weekend, build a couple of modules, and soon enough you have all the modules, um, pretty much. And that's where we make the promise. That's how we make the promise. Okay, once you have all those modules, you and a friend can assemble all of that into that finished house that you see here in a week you know so that's that's pretty cool that, that enables this to happen by many well it enables access by many more people than currently can do it because time is a real constraint it's huge amount of work to build a house but on one side we're saying okay let's reduce this the complexity of it um, if you look at the CAD files you'll see how our bathroom is designed like the plumbing and there's like super simple and compact for the electrical we're doing this utility channel like I described that in some of this work here in the house wall module design I described the utility channel how you pre pre-wire all the electrical into the panels and then once you you assemble all the modules the wall modules the electrical is already in there so all you need to do is run a si single wires to each of the the panels or keep extending wires from the electrical panel and it turns, uh, you know, like a $5,000 electrical job or whatever, however much you're paying for labor on that, to something you can do in like one hour with like a person or two, you know. It's just crazy efficiencies by the way you design. Uh, I mean, we've learned a lot about that, that it's a world of difference between design that's buildable and not buildable, efficient versus not efficient. And if you really plan it out, you can be very, very effective. And that's, that's the basic concept of extreme manufacturing. 
So if you want to look at what extreme manufacturing is, there's actually a page here like, like this uh, extreme manufacturing design rules or design principles. Um, I should say principles because rules are meant to be broken. Um, but this is kind of like some of the why and how we do it and it, we'll see, look into it and that's what we learned over time. Um, so what we can do right now is actually if you guys want to put your names to any of these modules and try just you know control C and V on these individual modules copy and paste okay so this is wall module one or just the template and then you just fill in like maybe okay so I say control C uh, and then control V this is uh, control V so it, it ended itself up there so wall, wall module four so I, I added this I said wall module four that's the corner module corner module on floor one on the first floor uh, right corner right wall corner corner module and I would say right wall just maybe describe it right wall co corner module so the convention being when you're looking at the front of the house with a with a door that's the front and right left back and forward it's so right wall corner module on first floor I would add the CAD file link where's the CAD file link all the CAD files are here on the on the seed home v2 3d CAD part library so one module four there's the CAD file there's actually the sweet home I already extracted this size so preceded this whole thing so the sweet home just that one single wall wall panel file is right there so I would uh, attach that to their CAD file link um, and the video link that's not the right video link. that was the video link for that one of those modules don't know which one but once we have that from another you know global collaborative team we'll say we're building this we can get the video feed here and put the actual link to where we're building this specific module so you have the backup of there's the CAD file and then there's the actual video which if you have the so from the CAD you can get the entire cut list from this CAD file right there I'm serious and now if you have the video you can actually write down the extensive build procedure from step one to Z so that's how you can divide the, these tasks up between virtual and, and real teams and because each module is separate you can do that in parallel mm -hmm. so in principle if we had a thousand people you can do an entire build guide for the entire house in one day <laughs> of a different model let's say let's say we want to productize a different model okay so we got rosebud that's the two-story one we're working on right now great well we need a single story ranch style house type that uh, we want to build for a customer tomorrow okay thousand people later and one day later we've got the complete plans and everything right so it's pretty powerful what you can do and it's like you might ask why well uh, I think it's because we can uh, I, I think the advantages there are it's it's definitely a collaborative process where uh, the value created is, is significant like how else would you avail these open source blueprints to anyone else without having a collaborative fun process that's for the common good like that just doesn't happen out there so there are no known revenue models where you would even get a complete super complete transparent open source plan set like that so by large scale collaboration you're dividing the task into so many small parts that it's actually manageable and doable and fun so it's about executability this can become a practical method to design and build things that's that's the whole whole idea um, so I would encourage you guys to go into these um, uh, between the CAD files, uh, the role allocations. If, if you guys want to do that, go right ahead. Yeah, I added it to the to-do list page and on, um, what's it, page five of the wall module build sheet. That's like the format, right? Yeah, the, page five in this wall module build sheet, sheet, that's kind of the template. And you notice that I start with a cut list and I eliminated like part list and tool list. Um, yeah, because they were kind of redundant. Yeah. But, yeah. Yep. So couple that of questions. Oh. That's um, you know, start with that. You know, you got some studs, some blocking, and so forth. 
Uh, you can look at wall module one to see how that's been done, but you have to kind of study the, you know, study the document, study the actual CAD file, just manipulate it, hide parts, and you can pretty much figure it out uh, and do it. So it's an open invitation for anyone to do this. As we get the apprenticeship program rolling, other people with a free CAD badge, and any other collaborators who are truly interested in doing this, they can actually review this whole video and get a lowdown on this on the whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, to for some people who are, you know, savvy enough to figure out and spend the time to study it, they can actually get rolling and in, into meaningful collaboration because uh, the value that's already been done is a lot of the the engineering and just the basic design of how you fit things together. Uh, one more thing I want to mention is you might look at what is this right, light, right, left stud detail here. So that's not shown, the holes are not shown in the model, uh, but the way we're attaching the, this, and actually we haven't done this before, but we said, okay, uh, it's important for the modules to align. How do we do like a self-aligning procedure for all the walls once you're stacking them up in a wall? Well, you can use precisely located bolt holes. So th this time around, see, before we just mm -hmm. screwed the modules together. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes the screws don't pinch down tight enough. You might have a little gap or like um, you don't get the modules perfectly aligned. So this is the first time we're just going to do the bolt holes. We're going to pre-drill those bolt holes like a one inch hole uh, and throw in a, a half inch bolt through it. Now, we're oversizing this a bit because with wood, what you'll notice is wood is not, it's not like metal, wood is not straight. Uh, one of the main challenges for any builder is going to be like, ideally you have perfectly straight wood, but you know, you let it out in the sun, it, it, it warps up or it gets wet and it gets warped up or it just comes warped from the, sh the, uh, from the store. Uh, you're going to have issues. So we're oversizing these holes a little bit and then we're sticking in one inch bolts but we're basically doing this procedure for just about every module except for the corner ones where you don't have the adjacent module so like for this you might say here this is uh for this corner module i know that only the left hand side is going to have the this so only the left stud here uh i'd erase the right you know because it's just the left stud detail now would erase this line here because that's the right side. So this, that's the left stud detail. Uh, but we have to do this, uh, yeah, uh, because we're assuming that each team gets one of these panels and they don't necessarily know what the next guy is building. We have to include all the necessary information in each sheet. So we would include this left and right stud detail. <clears throat> in each of the, the cheat sheets uh, unless that's not present say it's some other module like we haven't discussed like the floor and the roof uh, but a house is made of foundation it's actually quite simple it's a foundation walls floor and roof there's four parts to a house now you can get much more detail than that but that's the general thing here we're covering the walls both interior and exterior so if you know how to do the foundation and also the the, the wall, the, sorry, the, the roof and the second story floor, that's pretty much it. Like where uh, if you go through the model, you see the, the whole big floor platform and so forth. But but the walls, they get you a lot. That's that's like a lot is in here, especially if you include the electrical and plumbing inside these walls. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, any questions? Like would somebody, so, so what did I miss that would enable a person to go completely from access to the files that are on the wiki page, the wall modules here. So that actually, the blue one means, blue means that they're already existing, the red means it's not there. Uh, what I wanted to do, like if you do click on a build cheat sheets, it should take you directly to that wall module one cheat sheet. Yes, it does. It actually takes me to the specific page in a work doc. You can actually, take the, the exact link for this particular page, it doesn't change. So so once you finish your module, you can actually go back to uh, this wiki page here and paste in that link so that somebody who's who wants to access the cheat sheet can follow 
can know where to find it. The critical thing for a large scale collaboration is people know where to, have to know where to put things and where to find things. Here we have this part library where we have these 70, so this is like one through 70 pretty much here. Uh, some of it is not done at the end, but one through 70 have at least the CAD file. So each person working on it would want to do a thumbnail, just uh, paste it in by uploading a file. How do you upload a file? The way I typically do it here is uh, I just, uh, this is edit mode of the wiki. I just control C, control V. You, you have the upload file on the left hand side of the wiki. You have to keep track of what file name you use. I like to do like CD go home to wall three, let's say. Um, that shows up as a hyperlink that you can then upload. So there, there's that, there's that hundred px hyper, that hyperlink. If I click on that, it asks me to upload the, the file, which will be shown in this small thumbnail size. Um, well, you have to change this file name right there to make it. So it's a little wiki syntax there, but you can populate just uh, the, the savviness. You have to understand how the wiki works here is just just um, wiki editing. Um, but other than that. You can simply click on this build cheat sheet. If you don't know how to add it, don't put in the picture. Well, someone that knows how to do it can do it. Here, like the build cheat sheets, what you want to do if you click on that, just put a link directly to the specific page within the work doc that we're working on. So that if somebody, if you say you gave it a couple hours today, well, maybe somebody else picks it up tomorrow and they know exactly where to find it. So as long as they know that, you can tag team on it. So in principle, you could have like, say you've got global design, you got a team here, then you got, go to Hawaii, then you go to Japan, Europe, and you can be working on this 24-7 in a 24-hour hackathon if you like. A global hackathon, that's an idea. Uh, definitely doable. Um, so with that said, um, I think I covered quite a bit of the detail. Any questions, like, is this sufficient to, for somebody to actually um, take this and work on it and actually do one of these wall modules and, and do a cut list. Cut list and start of the build sheet sheets. What questions are there in the way of that? Brad, welcome, hi. Hey Martin, um, could you go through the steps to pull out the individual wall modules in open sort or in Sweet Home 3D one more time? Yes, sure can. Uh, so let me let me share that again. So first of all, you have to know where to download the CAD file. <clears throat> so yep. walking somebody through, okay, there is, you know, the wiki is a mess, but it actually does have a taxonomy. <laughs> if you understand that taxonomy, I can promise you that within seconds, you'll be able to pull out any single page on anything. Like, okay, where is this uh, CAD file for the Sweet Home 3D? Well, what are we doing here? I'm gonna show you what we're doing here. So in the title, I would say, okay, Seed Eco Home 2. How about Seed Eco Home? That was, see, this is Seed Eco Home 1 here, but how about I try Seed Eco Home 2? Oh, it actually does exist. Okay, there it is. <laughs> I've been making a pile of redirects trying to make everything work. Well, but that's, that, that's, uh, that's, you call it a hack, but that's doable. That's, that's, uh, that's really yeah. the game. So, for example, if, if the, if the taxonomy that already exists there doesn't work for you, like you might think this is, uh, first of all, you have to have the name. Like we know this is Seed Eco, Seed Eco Home. Now it's kind of weird, but I know that I, I put it in as Seed Eco Home uh, too. So I, I know this already, so it's kind of cheating. But what if you didn't even, even know what this was? Well, you do have to know some things. You have to know, for example, like GVCS, the Global Village Construction Set. Like there's 50 things we work on. One of them is actually the the micro house, right? So how do you know what all the machines names are? Well, I'll start with GBCS list. Um, oh no, there's 50 machines. You got to be able to find them. But we know that one of them. We actually started the house project as micro house. Okay, right. So there's micro house. Let's say. Well. Typically what happens is you have for any project, the best place to go for is micro house. We know that's a project. Go to genealogy. That's the, that's the taxonomy for, here's all the stuff we built. Look at that. Sidika home is the last one. Okay, now you know how to find a Sidika home. Great, here you go. Uh, now we look still looking for that CAD. 
Item number five is CAD. So that's the description here and the link to work product, the actual CAD is this link here. And by the way, you can review this video where I explained this before. So if I, I'm explaining it again now for, for, uh, for ease, but you, you could actually figure that out by rewatching the video. That's just another hint. Okay. So now this CDCO home CAD page got kind of confusing. There's a lot of stuff here, like part libraries, this and that. Well, you tr let's try to parse it. Okay. CDCO home, C home to part library. Okay. Well, here we go. Wall modules in sweet home 3d. There it is. Um, but if you start with the mod model itself, well, I know that this is in Katarina's source Google Drive right there. And if you want the big file that I showed you, uh, it's actually linked in the in this main document. Is it not on the wiki yet? It is there, but uh, but there's multiple ways to do it. So I'm going to continue yeah. with showing you how to do it from here. So I'm I can maybe try and... It's right here. So this is the CAD Rosebud working model as a 5.14.21. Oh, that's pretty recent. Let's try that. Yeah, it's on Google Drive. So I'm trying to get Katrina out of Google Drive, but <laughs> she, she refuses. So, um, <laughs> but there's the CAD and supporting Rosebud model files. That was the CAD full working model. So I would just start with that. You have to download this here and see now, the only thing is that one that is linked to, that's the conceptual one. So it won't have all the detail. So you actually want to seek a little further. So CAD supporting uh, this. So this is uh, once again from the, the wiki page, it links me to this. So it's actually under technical. So this this here doesn't have a like a well defined taxonomy, but but I can tell you it's under technical. You first uh, technical seed. It's actually this one right here, CD Cajon Technical Rosebud Seed A. We've actually done several mo different models, but that's that's the file you download, and it should be linked in. Um, so this file right here, it says SH2 Technical Rosebud Seed A, because we made several like A, B, and a couple others, an expanded version. But here you got to download it. So so say you got the file already downloaded, you open up Sweet. So this is your file, download it, say save it to the desktop. Um, I saved it to the desktop. And now, say I get into, so do not save it. This is my model here. So say I opened it, to open that file, you would go open, thing, thing I, I just downloaded, downloaded was it SH2 Technical Rosebud there, CA. So that's, that's the actual, actual file. So, so I just opened up the thing, thing I downloaded, downloaded, I think. When I searched the name in the wiki, it redirected to Seed Home version 2. Would it be fine with you if I made a page for this design, I guess the word would be Absolutely. specifically? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, the, the, please go, go ahead, no problem. problem. The, the thing, thing is that there's already an existing taxonomy in the wiki, you can't, can't break it. it. The, the only thing we can do is add value by creating new pages that actually are organizing pages. That's, That's definitely value mm -hmm. added. Feel free to do it. Yeah, no, I've been on the note of how to get the things two other kind of ways the genealogy yeah, that's a good way another one i've been trying to make category pages yeah, and i didn't know how to search them up until what like a week ago i feel really dumb about that but um instead of typing in the full thing and trying to get it but what you do is just type category in the upper right corner in the search bar and then like the, the first character of the name and that'll actually be how you get because there's one that says you can go through the cars bf so you can search categories with that i think there's like housing and construction one for obi and stuff so that's another way and then also searching related terms and then going into like the contains it's a bit of a mess but you can reverse your engineer your way to stuff through that yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, lot a lot of different, different ways to navigate, navigate around the wiki. One, one really useful thing, thing I like to look at is ver like uh, wiki, wiki history. So if, if you, you know, for example, that everyone on the team is working on it, like, like, like say, say Justin Logs, he's, he's got a lot of names, Justin Logs, and so forth. Um, you, you can, can look, look at the recent wiki history, history and which is, um, you know, it's, it's called Recent Wiki Changes. And you can see what happened, like who worked on stuff, you know. 
there's special pages like active um, you know active users list who's editing it right now you know, like Brad for example myself a bunch of people see so there's different ways um, your work log is a good way to organize like you just make links to the pages you use all the time like in my work log I I put on certain links say at the top like I have, I have the overall development hours, and by the way, guys, this this, this graph here you need to exponentiate after this year after we get really started. Is, um, My hour logger is broken. Any yeah. idea why it's doing that? Yeah, I'll have to figure out. Let's figure that out later. Uh, send me yeah. a screenshot. But what's, what's happening right now? We got own, it's, it's it's you know low effort, effort like 150 hours collective time that people are logging so it's not too much but there's the different links like i keep always links to the things i work on and and things like march and time sheet, for example my time sheet that i keep here so you can do that um but say you found this, this the, the file you downloaded is just getting right back to the the this sweet home 3d file uh it, it is descriptive, descriptive like, like it will tell you first story yes definitely and the check marks here is, is where you hide and and disappear hide and, and show things uh, but, but first start looking at the name like first story yeah like the first story right wall right that's what we want right so you can go right there now because everything else is showing you you can't really see what you're pointing to here Outside of the fact that you, you know, the top picture here does show you highlight that you just highlighted that wall there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's the right place indeed. Uh, but, but what I do is just very useful thing, just because of this this model actually has so much in it. Control C and then go into a new document and click the U button there and Control V into the there. So, so I just extracted this right wall here, but then in it I can also go right to like, I know that's that one right there, this, this wall right there that I extracted. So I control C and I just put it in the document to keep things clean. I just extracted it into there. Otherwise like your whole part tree there will get so confusing because there's like hundreds or thousands of parts. Here you can uh, do this. The thing I did, control uh, uh, right mouse click, ungroup furniture. And keep doing that until you separate everything. Keep un ungrouping that, ungroup, ungroup until you get the blocks show like the, the cubic structures. And that's like atomic part breakdown. So that's how you can get all the parts. Did I answer the question? Yeah, I think you got it. Um, okay. I just need to. I'll, I'll try and make a wiki page on that too, just yeah. like kind of a list. And my, maybe afterwards we might want to make like a kind of three minute or so video on the concept of just like the quick bits of but the wiki, wiki page i think that'll be nice um thanks eric that's a great thing for you're you welcome to do. um some questions i had i guess if no one else is going i don't know but um wall module number three and forwards either the png isn't loading or it's not uploaded right on yeah, the yes. um yeah then it must mean it's not uploaded um does that mean it hasn't been uploaded or someone hasn't taken the picture or whatever yet? Oh, uh, what you see is what you get. If it's not on <laughs> the wiki, it doesn't exist. Yeah, okay, because does that mean that's, that's another actually, task then? That's a serious thing. That like, We work so transparently that as soon as anything exists, it goes on the wiki. And what does that if mean? If it gets Otherwise, documented. <laughs> right, right. But that's, yeah. the, that's one of the major rules of collaborative literacy for large-scale design that we need to pay attention yeah. to. It's that if it's in your computer desktop, great. Well, nobody can access it. So the only way you can have that access by the whole world is if you put it up in a public venue such as the wiki. So the wiki is our universal organizing place where as soon as you've done it, as soon as you upload it, means that somebody else can, can help you so let people help you that's that's one of the cardinal rules here uh so so for example with a practical question like oh okay well what's exactly is on that cad page here like if you look at my screen well okay cd home two wall three png doesn't show up that's that one well we need to change this name to, to probably be the same as that one um that means nobody did it. Nobody did a copy and paste screenshot, nor upload the 
the image because this doesn't populate automatically. You gotta put everything on here, right? This is yeah. Is that your slate. is that a screenshot or is I know what it's what a is this? Screenshot. It? CAD yeah. tools, you can do the, what is it, the technical drawing or whatever, where it turns them out. Is yeah. this, you just do a screenshot and no, crop it, or I'm is this a this, tool? I'm going into the screenshot app on my computer, uh, select area to grab, take screenshot. So I would go... Um, yeah, so okay, go just here. standard. Yeah, just the standard procedure. You've got your screenshot app, select area to grab, and... And there I took it out of the picture where I hit everything, budgets that one module. But if I wanted mm -hmm. to say, okay, yeah, okay, I upload this whole thing, that's my screenshot right there. You know, save it. Keep it to a low size, like 10K, so you don't blast, you know, overload. <laughs> Just cut tiny screenshot. Uh, that like to that. the to-do list. Where did I put that? Um, so what other pieces of information are missing to make somebody able who watches this video to actually download one of these Sweet Home 3D files and make a cut list out of it. I don't think too much. I'll try and clean up the related pages and make up the page mm -hmm. yeah. on the um, process yep. of just like the specific list of tasks. Yep. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, what's a good so communication venue? We've got the email thread, but where, what's a good communication venue for people? Like, where do, do people want to communicate? Now, sorry, we still got to get the, our uh, forums up. Like, we want to have the. Uh, I just got to get that up there. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, actually help out on that, that would take like ten hours of time or so. We just got to get that up there because uh, we have the the discourse forum software already installed. We just got to set it up with all the different sections and stuff. Uh, it's like a ten-hour task. But um, got to do it. Um, but in the meantime, what what are what are good communication forums that we want to use? What, what works? Discord for works for me uh, generally, personally. Um, I don't know what other IT related tasks Discord. you have. I I can try to talk with some of those. It's as well. not yeah. open. I'm fine with it myself, but for the open source puritans, it's not open source. Although. I was looking, yeah. and there is something similar that basically does the same task. We just have to set it up. What was the name? I edited it recently. Yeah, element. Is it element. Yeah. So if any of you are masters with that, I would be down to get that going because we also have the Slack, but I think that isn't open source either. But element, it seems neat. Anyone have experience with that here? No. Um, I I think I I ran across it when I was just looking at the wiki before one of your one of your updates I, I think but um mm -hmm. I have Telegram and Signal as well Element mm, how do you you know like if it's one of those apps how do we can we create a group where we invite everybody from the email or how do we do, like what's a simple practical way to get everybody on the same thing? like especially if we've got more people like what's uh, I think yeah, usually you got to work out as we go along. There's a lot of little critical details, like how do you get effective at communication, how to get people right on so that there's minimum uh, startup barriers and stuff like that. Yeah, the Discord has been working pretty well. Precious Plastic has had one for a while, so I just kind of made one to kind of cross-network with them, I guess. There are a lot, a lot of people, but yet again, it's not fully open source and also could use some cleaning up, I guess. I don't know, like half my stuff, it's all kind of, <laughs> kind of like in development all the time. Yeah, but so um, it's got some open source in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, you typically just get a link, like an invite link. You send it to the people, and then they click on it. It takes them to the page and stuff. Or you can make it a public group where people can even look it up. There are different levels of like privacy and whatnot. But Justin, did you want to say something? Can't hear you though. You you're, you seem to be muted. Oh, I can um, read if we need to. I can. Is the wrong mic selected maybe in settings? I think mine was on the wrong one. Mm -hmm. The little arrow thing. Yeah, okay, want me to read? Let me see. Does element do screen share? Yeah, I think it, ba I have a page on it. Let me pull it up. I, I haven't fiddled with it yet. And I don't think I found any YouTube like reviews of it, like video reviews. But um, 
it seemed like it basically did all the same stuff. Like even the um, I can screen share right now if need be. But yeah, even yeah, you could do audio channels, video channels. I think I'm trying to read here. Uh, yeah, I know the Slack one was interesting in that it had plugins for for um what was it? It had a plugin for Jitsi, which was neat. But um. Yeah, I think that's a good option. I'm not really the most... I'm not really capable in that area of the whole setting up things like that too much. So if anyone would be down to collaborate on that, I'd be good. But yeah. Brad, do you have any comments? Um, well, what we used from February for the last few months uh, was the oh. Facebook group. Yeah. I don't know if it worked that well, but that's what we used. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's we 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 should definitely do multiple venues. Uh, yeah. Some people, you know, like one or the other. The, just a link to the post where we talked about uh, where we had this. Um, this is the okay. This thread right here. Um, that's let's continue within that thread. It talks about the house wall mod, just collaborative design guide. We can go under that um, let's just paste that um, I'll, I'll actually put that into the doc as house module design well uh, since these are the build cheat sheets um, we got some role allocation yeah, right in here Justin. and um, I'm gonna put things like okay face OSC workshops Facebook thread. I know that I don't have a Facebook account, so it has like some pop up being like make an account or whatever. So, but I was skimming the other day, and yeah, there was a pile of information there that I was missing somehow because I didn't have that account and stuff. So yeah, definitely merging that around different other areas would definitely be neat. Uh, video gallery, I'm gonna actually include this. It's got some decent resources there. We've got all this stuff basically on uh, Google Photos, but they're shutting down their service where you can just put your all your stuff up there. So, sorry, we're probably going to have to look at a, an on-site server at some point, or something else. I mean, there's probably some other good solutions, but we're talking about gigabytes of data per day, so like a whole bunch yeah. per day because we're like the time lapses uh an all day time lapse lapse is about four gig at 4k uh taken at one second the kind of time lapses we've been shooting for the cd go home so they get heavy uh, and actually for the uh, you know we want to have basically a detailed time lapse for every single single module so a typical day we run several cameras and you can actually run a whole bunch of cameras. Like when we actually have the builder crash course in September, um, we'll probably have like a, I don't know, 20, 30 cameras running. Yeah. What cameras do you have on site? Uh, I've just I've got some some Canon SL3s plus some Acaso V50 Pro little time lapse cameras like this. These are good for like a Caso V50 Pro, their cheap version of, yeah. uh, of the GoPros uh, with one sec. I run these all day on one second time lapse, stuff like with an external battery pack. So a thing that works really well is this on a tripod because you need that um, external battery mounted in a regular tripod so you can exchange different cameras. The other ones are the uh, higher quality Canon SL3s that allow you to take time lapse automatically. It, it stitches it all for you together for a whole day with uh, 
solar panel, um, solar power to run all day because we don't have, uh, you know, work site, you typically don't have electricity everywhere, wherever you have the camera, so. Um, what storage so do you have on your workstation, like hard drive wise or? or? Uh, it's just, just some external drives, just. Uh, like a couple of terabytes couple or what? A couple of terabyte external drives to do that before I do the upload to the uh, to the Google Drive. But June 1st is when Google Drive freedom ends. <laughs> so we'll have, to <laughs> um, we'll have to go to something. I don't know if this is something that you thought of. Yeah. Maybe of hosting NextCloud. Yeah. NextCloud is kind of like the, the Google Suite and then having only Office as well. Um, that's open source. You can yeah. do the same kind of document editing with uh, multiple people and you can it automatically uploads the changes and it, it's it's actually pretty neat but yeah uh, I mean, it just takes it a little bit of okay does it work so the thing that's like the critical metric like can you do something like the google slides with a bunch of people in it at the same time and it actually works with real-time update is it at that level so i know that the the word the quote-unquote word documents are i'm not sure about the powerpoint so that's yeah. something i would have to to look into yeah, i know that's... i have not seen it yet last time we checked was about a year ago it, like the stuff that existed for collaborative visual editing like google slides at that time it still didn't exist it might exist now because this stuff is changing all the time but this is really critical because you could have a whole bunch of people like you know like a few of us pasted in our raw allocation here but imagine even larger teams and you have to know what everybody is doing and you can get that when people are in the same doc so that's very important for visual communication like that from what i see it looks like it does i, I yeah. i'll try to spin up an instance here yeah. i think i'll be license so I, I can test it out you're on the discord right yeah yeah and yeah, yeah I'm terrible really, with names, sorry, but yeah, I'll make a channel for figuring this kind of stuff out, I guess. Yeah, Joshua, the critical feature is is the lag. Like, it has to be practical that when you put in a picture uh, and you move it around, it's instantaneous. You can't have, like, you're trying to do an effective Google Doc and it takes, like, you know, a number of seconds. Like, say I move my little head and now I'm, like, locked down for, like, five seconds as it updates the picture. Like that kind of little detail, it has to be pretty much real time like it is. You see me moving stuff around, it's real time, I can move on to the next thing. And otherwise it becomes literally like unusable, especially if you've got a whole bunch of people on it. Right. Yep. Okay. That's that's something I'll look into. I know um, yeah. I use Google as well, but that, like just knowing how Google is, I've I've tried to just move completely yeah. away. I know that's I know that's well, probably yeah. what we want to do that definitely so if you can figure that out and there's, there's a solution that's equivalent to this we will gladly jump on it mm -hmm. yeah so it's getting close to 5 30 you want to cut off at 5 30 so any 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 last minute questions the 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 task from now on is i'll be in this document i'll be continue working on these things uh if you guys can help on just taking and starting just you know just with the cut list the, the cut list part you can definitely do that and after getting a little more familiar with the build procedures from, by watching um, past videos, you can, or if you're familiar with any construction, you can get into build procedures. Now, if you study the build process, just the simple video we have, like you can kind of start saying, oh, you have to do this first and that, that second. A lot of it is real logic. You kind of like logic out, well, if you have these two pieces, what do I screw in first? You know, so you can even take a first stab at build procedures and then because it's all collaborative and you uploaded it, someone else can correct it. And this is live editable. So if you don't worry about being wrong, like just get stuff down, start placeholders. Um, this is all the different logic of collaborative design where it's about a lot of people helping out on the process. So, so kind of get used to this new framework. Like don't be shy about this. This is really about publish early and often. Uh, that's that kind of logic. Martin. Yeah. Before you go off, Jessica yeah, here. Jessica. Jesse there. How are you? Yeah. I've been following and just trying to download the software, running yeah. it on the the OSE. I think it's the old one. Is it yeah. on the new version? Well, OSE, the old one, you should just be able to I, download and run it. It doesn't work. Yeah. No, I just don't know. The, not a, I'm, in, I'm in architecture, not in computer programming. <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to be suggest. careful speaking architecture too. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, my suggestion is start with OSE Linux one, 
Yeah. I just download it, just install it, and see if it runs. It should run. There's, I don't see why it should. Well, like it's something stupid. I'm sure it's. That's what I'm saying. It's like some stupid thing. Yeah, I don't know how to do in here. <laughs> Did you download the? Uh, yeah, I downloaded the, from the site. I the pro, the software, and the and the files. Uh, I recorded it, it in my log. Even my log is up to date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Because it comes bundled with the JDK. It's like. Self, uh, self-contained, basically, because Java yeah. can be kind of oh, weird yeah. with Java. It's Java problem. So I have like the window up where you talk to it, and I don't. I mean, last time someone tried to help me with this, he we almost erased the whole root folder or something. It was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's something like just how you load the software. But um, anyway, I'll figure it out. I thought if it was an yeah. easy answer, because it did not. I opened the, it extracted the files, and yeah, it's not just running, which I would be happy about. Uh -huh. Anyway, yeah. Um, see, guys, this is the um, this kind of stuff. Like, I think the biggest challenge to this global collaboration is just getting on the same page. Yep, like, it's the little things. But yeah, and well, that's why I, I really I think to the experience. I'm so excited for September because the experience of actually building and doing it at the same time. I think that's where you see these like profound, yeah. like oh, yeah. synergy happen, and it's oh, yeah. amazing. Oh, <laughs> That's coming, you know, again, coming in from architecture, coming in from that world, this is hard. This is really challenging. The step down in the software, whew, it's painful. But, you know, it's, I understand the value of it in the bigger vision, so it's exciting. And I think the opportunity really lies in that sort of educational and build uh, oh, yeah. process and then different frameworks for it, you know. I'm in the urban context. I'd like to see it happen, but I, I what you were saying about the, you know, needing, <laughs> yeah, and, and we're, you, you know, you don't need to have anyone come check anything <laughs> when it's in a rural context. <laughs> you know, I had a question about that actually. I forgot about it, but um, you were saying how it could affect the schedule. Yeah. One, are the modules like water or weatherproof? Like, could you keep them in your garage or sitting there and not have them get like destroyed? Yeah, you, you could put a cover on them. That's fine. Yeah, okay, this, so that's part one. The part two. Even the problem is going to be even in the drawings, though, like getting the permit to do it. You have yeah. to, oh, yeah, just yeah. a little different process. Yeah, but I think we could get there with this where yeah, it could work. In a, with, context, with the yeah. inspection, what is the process like that? Would it be like they would see something and you'd have to fix it? Or what would the yeah. main kind of. First of all, you try to catch any anything that you need to fix in a plan check phase. You submit your drawings mm -hmm. to, the, to the department. And you say, this is a, these are all the details, this is what it's we're going to do. It's painfully slow. <laughs> and then they're going to say, okay, well, if you follow everything, you've got all the details in there, you should not have problems. Otherwise, if you do something else that you didn't have in your plans. Yeah, and it's slow. Else, and, and there's all, like, plumbing, everything has its own permits. Every time I have a friend, like my family of doctors, every time they try to build a house, they lose their minds because of the permit process. It's so slow. Right. So and that's... Yeah, we have to negotiate that. It depends on your jurisdiction, like in the East Coast, certainly you have more in California, yeah. stuff like that. But once we build, you know, have the experience of a few going through the codes and all of that, it becomes easier and easier. But that's part of the product development here. This is, yeah. if you're going to get to the best in the world, distributed market substitution. It takes effort. That's why we're open source and we collaborate with the whole world. With that said, hey, I got to go. We got to go. Let's, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Let's, um, yeah, that's good. This. The people I will, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to help with something once I get the software in there. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, great. <laughs> watch, watch this I mean, I, I have FreeCAD running on here, though. Okay. So Thanks, I can expect the file. Bye. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.